Welcome back to another episode of the Juan Juan Podcast. I'm your host, Juan, and today we have a special guest with us back again. Ryan, what's up, bro? Not a lot. Well, a lot and not a lot. Life is good, man. Can't complain. That's good. Yeah, I, I've been ta- I took a long break. You, you know what happened. I'm going to do an episode on that later on. But here we are. And before we get started, Ryan, can you let people know where they can find your work? Yeah, and uh, you, where they can send you dick pics uh, to and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, HeroParanormal.com or uh, you can also go to SpaceWolfResearch.com. So I want to get straight to the point, Ryan. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Does Bigfoot exist? Yes or no? Yes. Or at least something that people perceive as Bigfoot. I've seen something that and others have seen things that are hard to explain that uh and, and actually on this most recent trip we we saw something again that was along the lines of something bipedal uh moving quickly through an area where people shouldn't be at that time of night you know in the badlands and it's just a subject of uh you know mystery really recently i took a trip to the Smoky Mountains, I went up to Tennessee and I went fly fishing in the streams over there in the, in the, in the shallows. And <laughs> I was with a guide that I went with and, and I brought that question up just, just for the hell of it. Right. Cause everybody that you meet doesn't believe in all this type of shit. And I said, Hey man, and this guy was pretty cool. I said, Hey man, we're in the middle no we're no cell reception or anything it was just us and, and the fish right and there was something calming about the 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 roar of the streams you know what i mean it was, it was real relaxing i could i could have been there all day if i wanted to because it, it's just relaxing right i i said hey man have you ever heard anything about bigfoot in these parts or anything like that and he's like he looked at me he said who did, did, did anybody tell you anything and i was like no what do you mean he's like yeah, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen Bigfoot. I've seen him five times. And I'm like, and this is a guy who, mind you, he fishes, you know, a lot, a lot of remote areas. And, I'll, and he was telling me that one time, I was like, you sure it wasn't a bear, right? Because that's the first thing, you know, is, is it, w- what is it, right? Uh, uh, what's that, what's that one saying that they say? It's either the, the, the more simple explanation. Occam's razor. Yeah. Occam's razor, right? It's, it's, it's probably a bear that was walking on its hind two legs and that's what you saw. And this man said, no, it was chasing a deer, like a quarterback, just straight running. And dude, when I left that, because I was there for about four to five hours fishing. When I left, I had the weirdest synchronicities happen to me. It's almost like I, I, a part of me wanted to just walk barefoot in that area. I, I just I just wanted to like strip down naked, right? And just walk and just like connect. But I was in a national park. <laughs> So I don't think that would have been the, the smartest idea, but it was just something about it. And, and dude, when I came back, I was getting dressed in the morning and I have this shirt that is, it's, it's, I use them for my, for my, my commercial vehicles for GPS tracking. It's Samsara, right? And obviously we know what Samsara is, right? The, the symbolism, what it is, dude, that same week that I came back. I was putting on my shirt for Samsara and somebody kept blowing my phone up, right? Mind you, I used their product, Samsara, the, the shirt that I had on. And I didn't pick it up because I was getting ready the first time. The second time it rang again. The third time it rang again. And I'm like, who the, f-? and I just finished putting on my shirt. I said, who the fuck keeps blowing my phone up? Dude, I pick it up. It was Samsara calling me to give me a, a, a promotional or some thing that they had. And it was like, after I came out of that realm, it was like uh, like this weird connect. I, I don't know what it was. And I remember you telling me last time that I had you on the podcast, the work that you do there at Space, uh, 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 it's uh, Space Wolf Research, right? Right. That you made contact last time when you guys got struck by lightning and everything got burned. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys doing seances or what the fuck are you guys doing there? So... Yeah, I guess a lot of it is just asking for contact, right? And like you're saying, these synchronistic things, you know, um, 
at first we've total i've totally changed what i'm doing there at first it was just cameras 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 everywhere recording nonstop. and aside from security now there's really i've shut down most of the cameras that are in areas where we would get a hit or whatever and other than security and um it was you know what i've noticed is yeah right now it's like the contact you can definitely this area I think we're going to see a lot more come out of this area as far as mysterious stuff. But uh, there's definitely something there that is making contact with individuals, at least conscious, you know, from a consciousness perspective, changing our reality and possibly entering it. <sighs> you know, when we when when I talk to people about this sort of thing, do you feel it's it's almost like the Truman show, right? Where, and even the Gnostics talked about this. They, they related every single different thing to a different entity or, or demon per se. That's why a lot of people don't like the Gnostics. They, they, they pretty much stated that, that a demon created the false world. And that's what we're in now. Do you feel it? it, it obviously it's, of some intelligence but what's what's the point what's the point of all this how why is it that elon musk lives in like this 500 square foot pre-manufactured home now like is this is this part of the simulation is this like you know what i mean <laughs> i don't know i don't know but but there is there's ways of uh <clears throat> if you're open to it there's ways to kind of open human consciousness to the idea or if you just sit around long enough. But yeah, in, in areas like this, it's just a matter of time before it happens again. So, you know, it's it's kind of uh, eye opening. Eye opening is what I would call it. Speaking of of connecting, right, who, who was the one that said that I think it was uh, Graham Hancock where. One of the one of these guys that pretty much consciousness is is broadcasted to us not that we're that we're emanating you you, you know what i mean it, it, it's casted down to us and when you said about tapping into that and unlocking your consciousness it just reminds me obviously you know what happened with my dad and and people don't know before this is out my dad had a heart attack he died four times right and the strangest part of all that i asked him i said so so what was it like He's like, what was that? what like, right? I was like, well, the the other side. He's like, I don't, I don't remember shit. I saw nothing. It was just dark. So that just makes me think: is it because he wasn't consciously there? His his antenna wasn't attuned to that frequency, to where you know a lot of people say that when they die, they see their entire life flash before their eyes, et cetera, et cetera. You know, some people say it's the body, you know, excreting DMT before you die. Or, like you said, you have to raise your vibrational frequency to a certain extent to where you're able to pick up whatever broadcast it is. Or maybe some people are selected, some are not. Like, how does that work? Because, I mean, even the Christians, when they talk about the rapture, right, you have to be part of the church to be taken up. If not, you're going to be left behind. So is that part of that tapping into that frequency is that what all this praying is about and all this all this shit you, you know what i mean like like become one with what you know i think all everything you said it, it's a consciousness question and and uh you know it is i think dmt is a big part of it and i'm not talking about the drug per se uh, but, you know, that part of the mind, that frequency, like you said, that when you're under a situation of duress or this or, or in an area uh, of portal activity, let's say that your consciousness is a big thing that will come into play. And, you know, other than asking for protection when I'm, you know, there, it's ritualistically you know, which I mean, is a ritual. And even if that is it, you have to literally consider, oh yeah, well, I said a little prayer. Well, that's a ritual. You got to consider the reality of what it is. But the, um, the truth is, 
I, I've known people who experience nothing, like you said, and others that experience a bunch. I don't know if, like, I, I really don't know. The doors of the mind are so complex and how, how those are distributed and opened and closed for our own behalf to keep us healthy is way above my pay grade, but there does seem to appear, uh, appear to be ways that you can use technology to mimic things like DMT or these conscious consciousness opening scenarios uh, and do so in a way that there's no hindrance on the human being afterwards. So that's, that's somewhere that is interestingly, I, I never thought I would say that those two things are, are merging, but they are. Well, aren't they able to induce a DMT like experience with these lights? I think Joe Rogan's talked about it before where they flash some lights in front of your eyes and you're able to see, you know, you're able to pretty much trip out. Cause I've always said it, even, even doing mushrooms, when you're doing mushrooms, you are literally in another dimension. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? You're able to tap it. And let's not forget the guy who invented the mathematician that invented the modern day computer. He didn't do it to calculate things faster. He didn't do it to invent Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word. No, they he did it to contact the devil. Which if you look at CERN and all these other people, the modern what you know what, what's been called the modern day towers of babel where they're fucking around with things that they probably shouldn't be fucking around with and again i like the way you said that portal like activity what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> and was it you that mentioned to me silicon valley that's why it's 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 like everybody's drawn to that area cuz i know you Obviously, you have to do with the Skinwalker Ranch, and there's there's only certain types of rocks that are found within that area. You know, you know, and, and, and they're not found in any other parts of the world except for that area. And obviously, Skinwalker Ranch is a hot spot for act. I don't know if you saw. I was going to ask you if you saw that show. I think it was on History Channel. Did Did you see that show where the guy drives up in the Lambo and they're the new owners and all this shit? Have, did you see that show? What yeah, are your thoughts I, on I, that? I, I keep up on it just like everybody else. I think it's entertaining and uh, it appears to show the types of things that are taking place in the area. So I, I think that's uh, very kind of cool. The more, the more exposure the area gets, I think the more uh, whatever it is, is a, I don't know. There's, there seems to be a, a connection because it does seem like activity is getting more and more frequent, which, you know, there was a time when it was lower. So I don't, I'm not quite sure how the observer and the display are interacting, but it does seem like when the interactions there, the trickster's happy and it's cool. And what's the point of, obviously you want to know if there's something else, right? The something else is Bigfoot an actual, ape or is he a uh, interdimensional being entity whatever it is you said that you guys aren't taking as much technology and, and things toward to these areas what's the what's the point behind that it isn't the whole point to get proof to show people or are you doing this for like a personal satisfaction because you know telling a person who isn't into this kind of thing like yeah bigfoot exists the first thing they're going to ask you is do you got videos? You got a picture? You, you know what I mean? But again, I mean, yeah, the observer effect is very real. Yeah. Uh, and and what, what's the point of not taking technology in these areas? I, I, I mean, there's still technology just for security and things, but not from a, uh, I guess we just, I, in my opinion, I, I, beyond a shadow of a doubt, these things are occurring. Yet, they seem to occur more often when you're not actively trying to participate in recording them. And I say actively trying to participate because you still may catch something off of a secondary camera or something, but not, you're not the hunter, uh, you know, stalking the prey. Mm. They interact much more, uh, 
easily when when they're in control of the situation. And I say they because that, there may be more than one. One of the very common things that you'll hear is what sounds like chattering, a couple of voices chattering above your head, <laughs> you know, and there's nothing there. And you can hear them like, rah, 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 rah. dude, like, what talk, the fuck? It, it's totally crazy. And is it a tear between one dimension and the next? I don't know, but they're, they're definitely intelligent. It, it, that's the, that is what appears to me to be the most provocative is that they are so intelligent that they're tricksters. They, they appreciate uh, interaction that is unusual. And I, I don't know if, why that is, but it's definitely entertaining. I don't know how freaked out I'd fucking be if I if I was to hear something like that, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And I know I've been telling you because we, we've been planning a, a trip out to Utah and I want to go out there. But I think you've mentioned it before. You know, things can attach themselves to you and how that would affect me or people around me. And I don't know, dude, it freaks me the fuck out. Yeah, you you have to go at least not a bad idea to do it before and after, but at least one of the two you have to in my opinion go with someone that can light sage around you, do a protection spell on you, uh ask, you know, that nothing comes home with you. And you know, getting back to some of the things you hear, you'll hear things that you think you sh you're attracted to. One of them is water babies near water sources. Yeah. And I mean, it just sounds like a little baby crying next to a water source, irrigation canal, ditch or river. And, you know, being a fisherman, it's like I'm naturally drawn to water anyway. But you'll hear these sounds that sound just like a little kid crying. And that is supposed to be like the definite do not go near the water. For some reason, that is the, the, the charge is more powerful there for whatever reason. What but, happens, Ryan? What happens if you go towards the crying baby? Bad things, bad things. Either, like you said, entity attachments. Uh, you'll never find the baby. The baby's not there. But you'll find something else uh, in its place, some kind of a, uh, a bait and switch. Uh, sometimes people just disappear. You know, I've never had that occur to anyone I've known, but that is a common uh, folklore in the area. So anything from madness, entity attachment, all, all kinds of bad things to just completely disappearing. And, you know, it's kind of that good Samaritan thing. You hear something like that. You want to go check it out, but not necessarily when it's like impossible, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like almost like a Lovecraftian aspect to it all. Right. Definitely. Like, like, the, like these, these entities that will drive you crazy just from, from looking at them, you know, just from, from even thinking or just, just, just catching a glimpse you you're you're driven insane and it's it's like the missing 411 right these people who are in remote areas how i was in the middle of, of the smoky mountains and it's just like i don't know what it is man it's like the air is cleaner and it's just more pure and it's like and it's like charged with like this energy but it wasn't like a regular type of energy and i could have been fishing there all day and i could have had a bigfoot just feet so you know feet away from me just looking over and I would have never known that it was there or whatever it is, if it is peeking through this veil of 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 dimensions or, or, or you know what I mean? I don't know. It does it have to do. Is that maybe what the Nephilim were back then in the Bible and all these ancient scriptures? Right. They, they, they talk about these great wars and and giants and all this shit. And, and and not to mention that language. And I've talked about this before. Language used to be used to be more sacred. And we have we have. In our language, we have letters that have never existed. The original alphabet only had 17 letters. And, and they, they've added letters to almost to demystify it and to almost to strip away the power of, I, I feel that speech was that much more, dare I say, magical back then. And it had more power, right? That, that, that's what I feel. And, and, and I think that nowadays, even though technology maybe might help with this connection to the other side, I feel it, that it's dumbed people down as well and maybe dulled that frequency of getting over, you know, like Bluetooth. The sign of Bluetooth has to do with the fucking Nordics. It's crazy. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Bluetooth was the guy who connected all the tribes back then in, in the Nordics. And it's like, what? You have all these all these these, these esoteric signs and that these companies use in, the, in these colors and all that shit. But yeah. I, I don't I, I don't know, Ryan. How, how do you how do you deal with some shit like that? And I know I know you've probably seen some shit. And, and you told me you were writing your next book was going to be about consciousness. How how is that coming along? Because I know obviously this has a lot to do with that. Yeah, it, you know, I think the dealing with it is just if you're aware that it might just be a part of your consciousness that you're interacting with or that this, these others or friends, I try not to call them enemies. I took that from someone else, but it's a good idea. <laughs> but yeah, you don't want to be, uh, you don't, you don't want to be angled from an enemy or a hunter perspective because you just kind of want to be in a, mutually like hey let's see what you got and the scary thing about that is that some of the brightest minds that are really tearing into this have discussed that every time you do kind of catch a glimpse or see something that you give a little bit of yourself or that it takes a little bit of you oh, uh, shit. just showing itself and it, it's really reminiscent of the gin you know how they're always seen as like coming out of smoke uh always kind of just behind the veil you can't really see them but they're there and and a lot of the raw rugged energy that you were talking about in the outdoors i think people being in cities are kind of tapped off from that yeah. and when you're out there in an area where you shouldn't be or there's very a lot of this raw rugged energy and you're there interacting in a way that we used to primordially it, it's it's very different where that can go um, especially if you're open consciously to entities that are known to frequent the area or that kind of use it, use it as a playground of sorts. Um, if you can like stack all the bricks together in the right formation, no, no pun intended, you know, they, they know you're there. And wait a minute, can you wait a minute? What the <laughs> fuck did you just say? <laughs> can you repeat that again? Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's a lot like um, even the making of a fire pit. You know, that's announcing your presence in an area with rocks or, you know, medicine wheels or anything of that nature. Or uh, the pyramids in Egypt, perhaps. I pyramids in Egypt is exactly what I was hinting at. Or around the world. Uh, better, better. You know what I mean? Around the entire fucking world, because they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Not just Egypt. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even fucking think about that. Because when, when you are in a city, yeah, you're in a concrete jungle versus being in an actual jungle being in a place where yeah there there is that raw and that's that's the only way i can i can describe it raw and why well, i didn't i continue i didn't even put two and two together when you when you said that so a fire pit you're announcing yourself and yeah i mean oh my gosh you build a pyramid or a shrine for these things or something that welcomes them in any way shape or form and you know, that can be anything from uh, nearby oil rigs. The workers, I've had girlfriends of the workers tell me that, you know, the workers will put offerings so they won't get what messed with. The on the, you know, fuck? Yeah, buy an extra sandwich and leave it there for the trickster so that they won't get messed with that week or whatever. No and, way. Yeah, so, I mean, even if it's superstition, it's it's very real to the people that are engaging in areas that, are have have this phenomena almost like on a schedule so yeah it's interesting yeah i i i didn't even think about that but it's almost like that one show uh was it uh helion is it yeah hellier yeah or hellier where they were they were in the cave and and they did the the whole i hadn't finished season two and it went to where i wanted it to go Right. It went to we finally found out who they were trying to contact. And then, I mean, I'm not into the whole doing rituals and, and offerings and all that stuff. But it went to where, well, who, you know, who was the green man? And like the green man is he's all over the place. He, he was he's a deity that was worshipped. You know what I mean? And, and and maybe perhaps back then. Right. Uh, all the connections that we always talk about ancient civilizations and the Anunnaki and all these people. And even I, and I've heard even stories of, of astronauts that go into space again, where you're not supposed to be and things happening to, and there's movies on it, right? There's movies on all this type of shit, but 
I, I don't know how I would I would react if I was to see one of these 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 what do they call them the 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 werewolves the bulletproof werewolves and, yeah. <laughs> and all this shit and then how do you not how do you stop yourself from not having okay obviously a predator mentality when you're in this area to maybe having a prey mentality right how do you come to this mutual agreement of hey i'm one of you maybe but at the same time i know you're more superior than i so how do you stop yourself from thinking that way because obviously they you know they said that pe- that things feed off of fear mm-hmm. the way i like to think of it is you're stepping up to this poker table let's say with the ultimate trickster and you've got one chip you know it's like your entry to admission and where you place that chip is where a lot of things are based from and come off of and you you can put it on any bet you want but i always try to do the safety bet you know just let me interact safely and get out of this okay and that's always where you have to in my opinion start from uh, with the subject matter but once that's off the table and yet once your bed is in i mean it could go anywhere and it's uh very very difficult because you don't want to bring anything else to the table if you're expecting to see a werewolf like that's what you know you're going to see something ish werewolf ish most likely um or maybe canine ish or you might you know just have the coyotes could be crazy that night but um it's it's really difficult to to step up to that that bartering table without anything in your mind just trying to keep your mind clear and open uh but protected yeah and it's like you said what am i willing to give up to be able to catch a glimpse or and it and that comes back to a, a lot of these esoteric rituals uh, people said they sign their their soul away to to these lower vibrational energy entities whatever you want to call it and i don't know man i've been trying to not really uh, you have people like manly p hall who who talk about this sort of shit and it's like what the fuck did you have to do to reach that level you know what i mean and there's all these talks about the pedophile and all that stuff mm-hmm. it's like what do you where do you have to go in order to be able to dive that deep you know what i mean what are you well, willing to do I know only from the aspect of like the witchery way or the way that the skinwalker becomes a skinwalker in uh, that, that aspect, I know that what they have to do is beyond comprehension. I mean, just complete demoralization, everything from killing a family member, and that's just getting started. And the... The very interesting thing is, though, the, the very real effects of it in the community can be seen because by, by the amount of skinwalker-ish activity. But, and there's a history there. There's history of, of uh, I just found out about another quote-unquote skinwalker I never knew lived in the area. This was historically, not currently, but um, very interesting stuff, you know, with photos and a real person. And sure, some people said he was crazy, but a lot of the activity that he was able to do, like, uh, even in the winter would just run around with just the bottom, you know, uh, loincloth really on and things like that, that just don't make sense from a human perspective and he wouldn't get cold. So there's, there's a lot of weird stories like that. And I do think you're giving something up, even just being open to it. Um, a, a really interesting theory I heard recently was like maybe these are just the gods of old but nobody's looking and so when you put yourself in those positions where you as an observer are more likely to see these gods of old or like the green man or pan or whatever you want to call these forces of nature these raw rugged energies that are encountered in certain areas that maybe these things um just aren't interacted with anymore and so when people put themselves in those positions they're interacted with more than, than your typical interaction because uh, people just aren't open to it, putting themselves in positions to be open to it or trying to engage in any way. 
Yeah. And that just, again, makes me come to think about why people were ruled heretics, right? Mm -hmm. Why they were the dogma against not opening your eyes to other things. Like, no, that's not the way you need to be part of our cult because our cult is better and not think about anything else. Right. And I want to wrap it up there, Ryan, because I know we're on a time crunch, but we should do another episode so where we can really because every time I have you on, I love it, but I'm always left with more questions than answers. <laughs> Because this sort of thing, it's like, yeah, maybe even just the thought of of thinking about it, right? The possibility of something, you know, you know what I mean. And I, and and I wanted to talk to you about the whole condition that's happening right now with with the whole disclosure aspect of everything. How they're there are are they getting us more comfortable with it? What's really going on? So I'll, I'll have you back on because because your boy was late today. But one more time, where can people find your work, Ryan? And I'll post it in the show notes and we'll get together real soon again. Sounds great. Uh, HeroParanormal.com and SpaceWolfResearch.com. Awesome. And once again, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, man. I hope you have a good one and appreciate you having me on. Mm-hmm.